Introduction. Every time I lectured to a group of parents-to-be about baby brain development, I made a mistake. The parents, I thought, had come for a tasty helping of science about the brain in utero, a little neural crest biology here, a little axonal migration there. But in the Q&A session after each lecture, the questions were always the same. The first, delivered by a very pregnant woman one rainy night in Seattle, was, what can my baby learn while she is still in my womb? Another woman asked, what's going to happen to my marriage after we bring our baby home? A dad delivered the third question with some authority. How do I get my kid into Harvard? An anxious mom asked the fourth question. How can I make sure my little girl is going to be happy? And the fifth belonged to a downright noble grandmother. How do I make my grandchild good, she asked. She had taken over parenting responsibilities from a drug-addicted daughter. She did not want the same thing to happen again. No matter how many times I tried to steer the conversation toward the esoteric world of neural differentiation, parents asked variations on these same five questions, over and over again. Finally, I realized my mistake. I was giving parents ivory tower when they needed ivory soap. So, this book will not be concerned with the nature of gene regulation in the developing Robin Cephalin, Brain Rules for Baby instead will be guided by the practical questions my audiences keep asking. Brain Rules are the name I give what we know for sure about how the early childhood brain works. Each one is quarried from the much larger seams of behavioral psychology, cellular biology, and molecular biology. Each was selected for its ability to assist newly minted moms and dads in the daunting task of caring for a helpless little human. I certainly understand the need for answers. Having a first child is like swallowing an intoxicating drink made of equal parts joy and terror, chased with a bucket full of transitions nobody ever tells you about. I know firsthand. I have two boys, both of whom came with bewildering questions, behavioral issues, and no instructions. I soon learned that that's not all they came with. They possessed a gravitational pull that could wrest from me a ferocious love and a tenacious loyalty. They were also magnetic. I could not help staring at their perfect fingernails, clear eyes, dramatic shocks of hair. By the time my second child was born, I understood that it is possible to split up love ad infinitum and not decrease any single portion of it. With parenting, it is truly possible to multiply by dividing. My wife and I still marvel at how different our sons are from us, and yet how similar. Having kids is like mailing yourself a letter from the most delightful, meaningful future you can imagine. My children also amplified the meaning of my work as a scientist. Watching a baby's brain develop is like having a front row seat to the Big Bang. It starts out as a single cell in the womb, quiet as a secret, Within a few weeks, it is pumping out nerve cells at the astonishing rate of 8,000 per second. Within a few months, it is on its way to becoming the world's finest thinking machine. These mysteries fuel not only wonder and love, but, as a rookie parent, I remember anxiety and questions. Too many myths. Parents need facts, not just advice, about raising their children. Unfortunately, these facts are difficult to find in the ever-growing mountain of parenting books, and blogs, and message boards, and podcasts, and mother-in-laws, and every relative who's ever had a child. There's plenty of information out there. It's just hard for parents to tell what to believe. The great thing about science is that it takes no sides, and no prisoners. Once you know which research to trust, the big picture emerges and myths fade away. To gain my trust, research must pass my grump factor. To make it into this book, studies must first have been published in the refereed literature and then successfully replicated. Some have been confirmed dozens of times. Where I make an exception for cutting-edge research, reliable but not yet fully vetted by the passage of time, I will note it. To me, parenting is about brain development. That's not surprising, given what I do for a living. I am a developmental molecular biologist with strong interests in the genetics of psychiatric disorders. My research life has been spent mostly as a private consultant, a for-hire troubleshooter to industries and public research institutions in need of a geneticist with mental health expertise. 
I also founded the Tolaris Institute, located in Seattle next to the University of Washington, whose original mission involved studying how infants process information at the molecular, cellular, and behavioral levels. That is how I came to talk to groups of parents from time to time, like on that rainy Seattle night.